Okay, this video is about Tridacna gigas, which is the largest of all the giant clams. It is indeed the giant clam, and it's not uncommon for them to reach a length of over 100 centimeters. In fact, the record holding gigas shell was 137 centimeters in length, which is about four and a half feet. Okay, so here are a few examples of the species, and of course, they come in a range of looks, and you can hit pause if you want to look at them a little while longer. Now, those are some representative examples of this species, but if you go take a look at my online photo albums, you can find a lot more of them. And I'm sure I'll be adding more in the future, too. So, if you want to, head over to jameswfathery.com, and you can find a link there that'll take you to my albums. Next, we've got a few gigas shells, and all of these are typical of the species. Let's take a closer look at some of these, though, and I'll start with a couple of relatively small ones. Okay, smaller shells first. Now, the shells of gigas juveniles, they usually have a hinge that's about half their length, and the shells are typically fan-shaped in outline. And when they're clean, the shell is always grayish-white, too, and I've never seen any sort of coloration. The shell is also rather thin to moderately inflated when small, but it typically becomes more and more inflated as an individual grows. Now, when they're small, the valves are usually perfectly symmetrical to each other too, and they have smooth curves that allow the shell to close up tightly. The valves typically have only four to six folds, and while they develop into relatively low profile ribs when the clams are young, four or five of those are typically going to become very prominent ribs over time. Now, Gygus is found bissily attached to the substrate when young, but lives unattached when it's older and larger. Accordingly, the bissel opening is variable in size, but it's relatively small when they're juveniles, and it gets closed up completely as individuals mature. On the other hand, larger individuals, like these two, are typically somewhat elongated, and the hinge line may increase to as much as two-thirds the length of the shell, which allows Gygus to gape open especially wide. And, as I said a minute ago, as a gigas grows, the ribs also become more and more pronounced. They get more and more convex and broad. And, as they grow, their shell typically becomes more and more inflated, too, with large individuals being quite fat. Now, the shells of adults are also very thick and very bottom-heavy. And, over time, each valve develops three or four exceptionally large finger-like projections but the valves become asymmetrical and these projections, they don't fit together with the projections on the opposite valve. Instead, they sit in a much larger and very open curve on the opposite valve when the shell is closed. So, as you can see, the shell can no longer close tightly and it can't hide the retracted mantle very well since there are always several sizable gaps left between the valves. Again, Gygus is found bissily attached to the substrate when young, but lives unattached when it's older and larger. And even though the larger individual on the right still has a small bissel opening, it would have eventually been closed up. Next, note that individuals more than a few centimeters long lack any kind of scoots. However, when clams are smaller than that, some may bear a few tiny scoot-like structures near the base of the shell, and some of them bear a full complement of small, very thin, and well-spaced scoots, too. However, these are apparently lost or broken away over time. Other than that, the inhalant siphon is typically large and it's often held wide open. And it also lacks tentacles. It's always smooth around its border and this is the only species of Tridacna that completely lacks siphonal tentacles. I also want to point out that the texture of the mantle is variable. Now, smaller individuals and larger ones with well-extended mantles, they usually have relatively smooth mantle surfaces that sometimes have sort of a crenulated or rough margin around it. But, Many of these have very large, sort of bumpy, lumpy, knobby mantles that look thick. They sort of look meatier, like this one. And the mantle is always randomly dotted by numerous eye spots and may have many hundreds of them. These are typically a mixture of single eyes and small patches or lines of eyes made of a few to several tightly spaced ones. And regardless of the numbers, they're pretty much always bordered by a blue, blue-green, or green iridescent ring. You can really see them here on this big gigas, and if you go back and look at some of the other pictures, you'll see them on all of those individuals. And I'm still going. Now the mantle also has significant areas that are very light colored to colorless, and they're kind of translucent. 
and they're typically seen as meandering stripes and patches or numerous small blotches, especially in the flat area of the mantle between the valves. Here's another good example of that. And with that done, next I've got a little bit of video of some Australian giants living on the Great Barrier Reef. And then right after that, I've thrown in a clip of several big ones I saw at Bunakan Island in Indonesia way back in 2005. Now, that was when remotely affordable digital cameras that shot video were still not very good at all, so it's almost kind of humorous. Uh, those things have come a long way for sure. And that's it for this species. Now if you don't already have one, I'd really appreciate it if you got a copy of one of my books. Also keep in mind that I'll be adding new videos here in the future and will also add more photos to my albums as I get them. And with that said, I'm done. Thanks for watching.